This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. My name is Mark Matthews, and I have the pleasure of serving on staff here at Prestonwood Baptist Church. And on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Jack Graham, and the entire Prestonwood family, we want to say welcome to you to this 2022 graduation ceremony for Dallas Theological Seminary. And we are thrilled once again to host this event. And I know we have many of our Prestonwood Church family represented here this morning, but I wanted to extend an invitation to you. If you don't have a church home that you attend on a regular basis, you are personally invited to visit with us here at Prestonwood, here at this campus in Plano, we have a 9.30 and 11 o'clock worship. And then up in Prosper, we have our Prestonwood North location, which meets at 8.30 and 10 o'clock and 11.30 on Sunday mornings. Consider this your personal invitation. But let me say congratulations to each 2022 graduate and your families. I've already talked to God, and he said this is going to be good this morning. God is good, and it is a good day to graduate. So let me say again, welcome and congratulations, graduates.
Let us pray together. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We stand here today at this commencement ceremony of Dallas Theological Seminary 2022 in absolute awe of you, of your stunning salvation, of your constant goodness, of your everlasting kindness, of your magnificent mercy, and of your amazing grace in our lives. What do we have that we have not been given? And so today we praise you. We praise you for every graduating student that is here today. We praise you for your call upon their lives, for your incredible love for each one of them, and for their perseverance in their studies to make it to this day. Thank you, Lord, that they are Christ's chosen instruments to carry your name to the world. We praise you for all of the friends and family members who are here today to support their graduating loved ones. For their sacrifice and support, may they know how much you love them and how much we do too. And we praise you, I praise you for the staff and faculty members of DTS who have invested their lives into loving, serving, and seeking to form this next generation of ministry servants. But today we also plead with you to move in power during this service, to fill us by your Spirit, to guide us into all truth, to inspire us from your Word, and to send us out by your Spirit in your grace to serve you forevermore. It is our prayer that every moment of this commencement ceremony and every moment of our lives would bring glory to you. That every breath we breathe, every thought we think, every step we take, and every moment we serve, that we might decrease and Christ might increase. For he alone is worthy. This we pray in Christ's most beautiful and precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Now I understand why we needed to remain standing. <laughs> well, good morning. It is my privilege to welcome you on this very special occasion. We are honored to have the graduates from 2022 with us today. What a thrill it is to see such a full auditorium of graduates and their families. I appreciate the hospitality, the cooperation, and support of Pastor Jack Graham, Sarah Gurley, and the faithful staff here at Prestonwood Church for working with us to hold our commencement service here once again. There are few events in Dallas Seminary that provide as much joy as commencement. Commencement is what it means, a beginning. And while our graduates and their families think of it as the end, it is truly a beginning of a new season of service to our Lord. Revel in the joy of new beginnings, graduates. It is simply good. The mission of Dallas Theological Seminary as a professional graduate level school is to glorify God by equipping godly servant leaders for the proclamation of His Word and the building up of the body of Christ worldwide. And it is today that we fulfill this mission statement in the lives of these graduates. But as I said this morning in our pre-meeting instruction time, we are doing this for one simple reason to give glory to God. And for those of you that are joining us today and still may be wondering why these individuals have done what they have done, it is because they love a man named Jesus Christ, God in flesh, that gave His life to pay the price for 
our sins, and that free gift is open to all who believe. And we celebrate even that today. Well, this year marks the completion of our 98th year of existence at Dallas Theological Seminary. We offer our hearty congratulations to the graduating class of 2022. And God has been gracious. God has been faithful. God has made provision. And we have seen that even more this past year. For the faculty and staff, this day is filled with mixed emotions. We are sad to say goodbye to those we have grown to know and to love as they leave for their respective lives and ministries, but we rejoice for the privilege that God has given us to contribute to their growth in knowledge and skills and character. We anticipate seeing what God is going to do through them in this next chapter of their lives. I would like to acknowledge several different special groups of people who are with us today. If you are either the spouse or a family member of those graduating today, will you please stand to be recognized and thanked? We are grateful for you standing alongside your graduate during these years, and we want to especially thank you for playing an integral part in their journey at DTS. Our entire board of incorporate members, which includes our regents, they meet several times each year to pray, evaluate the health of the seminary, to recommit themselves to the doctrine, mission, and purpose of the seminary, and to seek the mind of the Lord for guidance and direction for the future of the seminary. Our trustees also meet monthly to oversee the stewardship of the school. All serve without remuneration, because they love the Lord and the people who work and study here at DTS. I would like to ask all of them who are here today and their spouses, if they are also in attendance, to please stand that we might honor them for their selfless efforts and their sacrificial support. Another group of faithful men and women who work often at great sacrifice to make the work of quality theological education a reality at Dallas Seminary is our wonderful staff. Many of them are still serving outside, but those that are inside this room, if you are a staff member at Dallas Theological Seminary, would you please stand that we might recognize you? It is also most fitting to acknowledge the godly and gifted faculty that God has assembled here at DTS. All our faculty, along with Dr. Bailey, our chancellor, and Dr. Swindoll, our chancellor emeritus, would all of you, along with your spouses, please stand. Friends, this is an incredible team with whom I have the great privilege of serving. Today, we would also like to especially recognize one of our professors who is retiring at the end of this school year, Dr. Scott Harrell. Dr. Scott Harrell, Senior Professor of Theological Studies, will retire from DTS on July 1, 2022. Dr. Harrell began his teaching career at DTS on July 1, 1997. 
and has faithfully served at DTS for 25 years. Dr. Harrell is the resident expert on all questions pertaining to Trinitarianism, <laughs> angelology, and soteriology. His plans for retirement include writing projects, thankfully teaching occasionally at DTS as well as overseas, and enjoying a little slower place, pace of life to spend more time with his children and his grandchildren. Dr. Harrell, would you please stand along with your wife, Ruth, who is here today so that we can recognize you for your many faithful years of service to DTS. Today we also remember three of our beloved faculty members who have gone to be with the Lord over the past six months. Our DTS Houston campus lost two of its leaders. Dr. Willie J. Bolden, who served as Executive Director of Community and Church Relations, an adjunct professor in pastoral ministries and educational ministries and leadership at DTS Houston, passed away after a lengthy illness on November 14, 2021. Dr. Bruce Fong, who served as the dean of DTS Houston and professor of pastoral ministries, was diagnosed with ALS a year ago, and after months of declining health, he passed away on January 7th of this year. And finally, our DTS family was shocked at the sudden loss of a longtime professor, Dr. Charlie Bayless, who passed away on March 6th of this year. Dr. Bayless served as a professor in the Bible Exposition Department for 28 years. DTS is a better institution because of the love and commitment of these three men and we will miss them dearly, but we will see them again. And on this occasion, on this special occasion, we especially miss their immense contribution, their joy for life, their love for the school, and their love for the Lord Jesus. Now, as we continue in celebration of our 2022 DTS, graduation ceremony. Please join us as we together honor and give glory to God. Congratulations, graduates. Scripture reading for today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 19 through 34. If you're able, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Now this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Christ. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally they said, who are you then? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. Now some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you're not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one who you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of a Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when he said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, 
that the reason I'm baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave the testimony, I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain uh, is he who he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I have testified that this is the Son of God, the reading of God's word. We are delighted to have Dr. Timothy Atik as our commencement speaker this year. T.A., as he is affectionately known, is a Texas A&M graduate. For those of you that don't know, it's a thing. (laughs) T.A. earned his master's from DTS and a doctor of educational ministry from Southern Baptist Seminary. Timothy was the executive director of Breakaway Ministries in College Station before recently moving back to Dallas to start his new role of teaching pastor at Watermark Community Church. Along with his responsibilities as teaching pastor, Dr. Atik has been married to his wife, Kat, Catherine, for 15 years, and he is dad to three future Aggie boys, (laughs) Noah, Andrew, and Jake. Timothy enjoys spending time training to become the goat in tennis. Let us know how that works out and enjoys good barbecue all the time. He loves teaching the Word of God, and he considers it an amazing privilege to teach it to the people at Watermark. Dr. Atik, it is our honor to have you come and speak to our graduates on this very special occasion. Please join me in welcoming today's special commencement speaker, T.A. Well, good morning. It is so good to be here with you today. Congrats to all the graduates. And uh, I just want to say thank you to Dallas Seminary. This place has invested so much in me. So it's a joy and a privilege to get to share with you today. I do want to start just by asking you the question, besides Jesus, who would you consider to be the GOAT? Okay, and I've lost half of you already, but GOAT stands for greatest of all time, and just to be clear, Dr. Yarbrough, uh, don't want to be the goat in tennis in general, just the goat in the 41-year-old age bracket of Richardson, Texas. That's kind of (laughs) more realistic at this point in my life, but, uh, and even that will be an uphill battle. But um, I just ask you, besides Jesus, who do you consider to be the goat? The goat. Uh, The popular opinion of today is it's either Tom Brady or Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Simone Biles, Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, Elon Musk, George Strait. I don't know who it is for you. But the good news is that Jesus actually chimes in on the conversation about the goat. And he tells us, his opinion in Matthew chapter 11. So when the goat, Jesus, the greatest of all time, is weighing in on the conversation about the goat, we should probably listen up. What does Jesus say in Matthew 11? He says, truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. That's pretty interesting. When Jesus, the goat, is saying, you know what, of all the people that have been born of women, that's everybody. There's no one greater than, than John the Baptist. And so I find that to be something that we should pay attention to, because when Jesus Christ is looking at the, John the Baptist and saying, you know what, the life of John the Baptist is truly a great life, it feels like it would be very beneficial for us to just take a few minutes and look at a life that Jesus considers to be great. And the reason that I say that is that as you prepare to graduate and as you move on to whatever is next for you, if you're not careful, by default, you will begin to define greatness in your life by how the world defines greatness. But our aim 
is to be pleasing to the Lord. And so uh, what a miss it would be to be great in the eyes of the world, but not great in the eyes of Jesus Christ. And Jesus has looked at John the Baptist, and we know why Jesus considered John the Baptist to be the goat. It's because John the Baptist was given a role that no one else in history was given, and that was to prepare the way for the Messiah. And yet, we can look at the life of the one that Jesus considered to be the greatest of all time, and we're able to extract from his life, hey, what does Jesus consider to be true greatness? So, I want to speak to you today about pursuing greatness after graduation. And we're going to do it just by looking at the life of John the Baptist. I'm in a room with a bunch of ministry-minded people, but just to remind you who we're talking about, John the Baptist was a medical marvel. He was born to a mom that was old, wrinkly, and barren, and yet he showed up on the scene. And uh, he was a very eccentric guy. He uh, he was trendy or hipster before trendy or hipster was a thing. He lived outside of town doing the hashtag van life thing. He, uh, he watched some documentaries, so he didn't eat much meat. Instead, he ate bugs and honey. I mean, he wore like a camel hair with a leather belt. Just wait till that comes back in style. Like, it's, it's coming, people. He took a vow to not cut his hair. He just said what he thought, and ultimately that's what got him killed. But that's, that's the one that we're talking about. And as we look at John the Baptist, here is what we learn from John the Baptist. Don't miss it. The greatest lives are marked by the greatest clarity. The greatest lives are marked by the greatest clarity, and I believe that John the Baptist was clear on three things, and I want to share those with you as I encourage you to pursue greatness, not greatness in the eyes of the world, but greatness in the eyes of Jesus Christ as you pursue greatness after graduation. The first thing that I want you to know is this, greatness requires clarity on who you are and who you aren't. We just read in John chapter 1, but I want to share it with you again and just watch the clarity that John the Baptist had on who he was and who he wasn't. Verse 19, and this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed. Watch it. Here's who he isn't. I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? He, said, he answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? He, we need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? Here's, who, here's clarity on who he was. He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. So, John the Baptist shows up on the scene baptizing people. The reason that that is important is when we think of baptism, we think of baptism uh, post-death, burial, and resurrection. But at this point in time, baptism was a ritual for Gentiles to go through to then identify themselves with the, the covenant people of God, the nation of Israel. John the Baptist really wasn't qualified to baptize people, and he baptized Jews which is interesting because he's basically looking at the people who consider themselves God's chosen people, and he says to them, you need to repent. You need to act as if you're not one of God's chosen people. And so that just trips off some alarms. And so basically the, the Jewish Supreme Court of the day, the Sanhedrin, sends their minions to figure out who is this guy. And so they're just working down their list. They're just checking off boxes. They're like, okay, we just, we just have to ask are you the Messiah? Like, are you the one that we're waiting for? You're kind of not what we pictured, but let's just rule it out. Are you him? He's like, nope, not me. I'm not the Christ. They're like, great, cool. How about Elijah? You know, Elijah didn't technically die. He was carried away on a chariot, and we're planning on him coming back to kind of prepare the way for the Messiah. So be honest. You, Elijah? He's like, not me. 
Okay, well, how about the prophet? Mo Moses talked about a prophet that would come. We now know that today to be Jesus, but there was, a, there was a belief that there was a special end times figure. So are you the prophet? He's like, no, I'm not, I'm not him either. And so what we see is we see John have great clarity on who he isn't. And I just think about what he declares. He says, it says that he confessed but did not deny, but confessed freely, I am not the Christ. What crystal clarity to be able to say, let me tell you who I'm not. I am not the Christ. Just think about everything that John the Baptist was declaring when he said, I'm not the Christ. He's saying, I am, I'm not God. I'm, I'm not the one who can rescue you. I'm not your long-awaited king. I'm not the one that all of history has been pointing to. I'm not the one you've been hoping for, waiting for, praying for. I don't deserve any of your worship. I can't change your life. I am just a man. There's a lot of freedom in that statement, I am not the Christ. I just want us all to say it out loud together. This is the most miserable part of the service today because I'm going to ask you to participate and just say those words out loud. On the, loud, on the count of three, let's just all say together, I am not the Christ. One, two, three. I am not the Christ. How freeing is that? Do you feel that in your bones, just the freedom of declaring that you're not the Christ? Graduates, if there's anything that you hold on to, hold on to that. Because I assure you, if you're not there already, a time's going to come where you're going to feel like you are the glue holding everything together in your world or your church. Everything is going to feel like it's falling apart. Everyone is going to be dividing over everything. There's going to be that couple in your church that's on the doorstep of divorce. People are going to be depressed. Giving is not going to be where you hoped it would be. People are going to post pictures of their church's Easter service with a packed room and your room wasn't packed and so that stresses you out. And if you're not careful, you're going to feel like Spider-Man kind of holding the city together. And you just need to remember you are not the Christ. Amen. That doesn't mean that you don't do anything. It just means that you realize you can't do everything. You can do something, but you can't do everything. I'll just tell you for me, it's extremely freeing doing what I do as a teaching pastor at Watermark. Doing what I do, it's extremely freeing to just be reminded that I'm not the Christ. Because when I remember who I'm not, it brings clarity to who I am. Basically, as a teaching pastor, all I am is a, is a spiritual mailman. That, that's all I am. I am I'm a spiritual mailman. Like, I didn't write the letter. I have the letter. My job is to deliver the letter. But that's my job. I am a spiritual man, man, but we, we are in ministry in a day and time where people are elevating and idolizing spiritual mailmen. But let me just ask you, when's the last time you took a selfie with your mailman? <laughs> like, when's the last time your, your mailman or mailwoman was walking down the street and you saw them coming and you're like, oh, geez, oh, man, okay, here she comes, here he comes. And like you walk out to meet him at the curb and you're like, take a picture. And then you're like, I really like how you give me my mail. <laughs> you've, you've changed my life by the way that you gave me your mail. No, no, that, that's not a thing. But you know what, if I forget that I'm not the Christ, I'm going to start caring about how you think I deliver the mail. And I'm going to want to be celebrated for delivering the mail that I didn't write. I'm just required to faithfully deliver it to you. And so uh, greatness requires clarity on who you're not. You're not the Christ. I am not the Christ. I love that John had clarity on who he was. What did he say in verse 23? He said, I'm the voice. A voice is something that you hear but can't see. He's basically saying, I don't care about you seeing me. I want you to hear me so that by hearing me, you're going to hear what I say and you're going to ultimately see who I want you to see. But I am just a voice. And he reaches back into the Old Testament Isaiah. And he says, 
I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. When a king would travel to a region, his route would be planned and prepared. People would go before the king and clear out the way, clear out of the way anything that would hinder the king's travel and arrival. That's, that was John the Baptist's responsibility, to just clear away way for, for people to see Jesus clearly. And what we have to be careful of is when it comes to clearing a path for people to see Jesus, we just need to make sure that we're not the obstacle that needs to get out of the way. I think about what Tim Chalice says, he says this, he says, the preacher is not someone who is to be looked at, but someone who is to be looked through. The task of the preacher is not to stand before the church and be seen and recognized as a great man or even a great preacher. The task of the preacher is to draw the minds and hearts of his listeners to God. He has failed in his calling if he is looked at instead of looked through. So I tell you that just to say uh, greatness requires clarity on who you are and who you aren't. Number two, greatness requires clarity on who Jesus is and who he isn't. Greatness requires clarity on who Jesus is and who he isn't. John the Baptist had clarity on who Jesus was and who he wasn't. Listen to what chapter, verse 24 says. It says, now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, then why are you baptizing if you're neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. So there was a superficial belief that if you were older, you were more worthy of honor. But John says, hey, just because he comes after me doesn't mean that I am more worthy of honor than he is. It's the opposite. He might come after me, but one is coming and, and I don't even deserve to fulfill the role of a slave in his life, which is just to to untie his shoe. I'm not even worthy of that. See, John the Baptist was clear on Jesus' identity, and Jesus' identity bred humility in John the Baptist. John the Baptist realized that Jesus wasn't just significant, he was preeminent. He was worthy of taking first place. So John the Baptist later would say, I must decrease, he must increase. Because Jesus must take first place in all things. He is to be treated as not just significant, but preeminent. And I just tell you that because as you step into leadership in different churches, it is good to remember that if in your church Jesus is significant but not preeminent, your church will become irrelevant. Because you will lift up people who are not the Christ. And so John the Baptist had clarity on who Jesus was and who he wasn't. He says in verse 29, it says, the next day he, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. And so John the Baptist reaches into the Old Testament, the idea of the Passover lamb, the the lamb without blemish that was slaughtered by the Israelites. They painted the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their homes so that the angel of death would pass over their homes as they would then flee from Egypt. And we now know Jesus as our Passover the lamb, Passover lamb, the one whose blood through faith is painted on the doorposts of our hearts and, and through faith in him, judgment passes over us and we have life in his name. That's who Jesus is. But then it says this, and I just want you to watch in verses 31 through 34, there, there's a lot of talk about sight Verse 31, I myself did not know him, 
But for this purpose, I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed so that people might, might see him, that Israel might see him. And John bore witness, I saw the spirit descend from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Verse 34, don't miss it. I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. What we see is that sight fortified John the Baptist's ministry. What we see is sight and bearing witness are tethered together. And the reason that I bring that up is that spiritual sight is a thing in the scriptures. Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Jesus says to his disciples, uh, having eyes do you not see? What, what then is spiritual blindness? Spiritual blindness is simply seeing Jesus without being captivated by his goodness and compelled to worship him. So if that's what spiritual blindness is, the question is, have you seen Jesus recently? Like when was the last time you were captivated by his goodness and compelled to worship him? The idea of spiritual sight, it's kind of like this. I used to work with college students and there's this idea known as the camp phenomenon. College students would go to serve at camp during the summer. They would show up on the first day and they would, they would see the most physically attractive girl in their opinion. But then over time, there, there might be another girl that they see, and over time they look at the way that they need, drink out of their Nalgene, and how they wear their Chaco sandals, and how they string up their hammock, and by the end of camp, they can't stop thinking about this girl. They want to do everything they can just to get back around this girl. Why? Because sight has been given. It wasn't there at the beginning, but by the end, all they see is, is that person's goodness. And I tell you that just to say something significant has to consistently happen in our lives where we, where we see Jesus and minister out of spiritual sight. If you're not careful, friends, as you step into ministry, you're going to buy into the lie that you're so important and that so many people need your time that you're going to move yourself to a place where you glance at Jesus far more often than you gaze at Jesus. And so you're going to just live off of glances. It's like, well, you know what? I've got five minutes right now in the cart. Like our, our world wants us to just glance at Jesus. You know what? I'll just do this quick devotion. I'll just read it real quick. I'll be done because I've got things to do. You know, I'll just read a couple verses. I'll meditate on them while I'm on the drive. I, I will survive off of glances. But the most fruitful ministry, let it be an overflow of gazing at Jesus. I tell you that just to say, if, if you're here and you met your spouse in college, is your story, is your like story of how y'all met and how you fell in love, is anyone's story, raise your hand if your story is, you know what, we passed each other Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we said hello to each other, and here we are today. <laughs> it's no one's story. You don't fall in love off of glances. No, a time came where you sat down and you began to gaze. And seeing gave birth to delight. And I'll just say this, I, I, I think exactly a year ago today, I sat at my own graduation from seminary. And uh, shortly after graduation, I realized that I had been in a season of living off of glances. And so I took time during the summer where I just began to sit with Jesus until I began to see Jesus more clearly. And I tell you that just to remind you that 
you can't plan quality time. Like, I can't plan quality time with my kids. I can't be like, you know what, I've got five minutes. This is going to be the best time ever I've had with my kids. It's not how it works. A quantity of time often leads to quality time. And so I just began to sit with Jesus until I began to see Jesus. And he became precious to me again. And so I just remind you that it's gazing that reminds you who Jesus is and who he isn't. And if you've been in a season of just glancing at him, then let me just encourage you, begin to sit with him until you see him. Finally, greatness requires clarity on what you were put on earth to do. Greatness requires clarity on what you were put on earth to do. What does John say in verse 29? He says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But then in verse 35, it says this, the next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this and they followed Jesus. I love this so much because John the Baptist's ministry was not a look at me ministry, it was a look at him ministry. Because John the Baptist had gazed at Jesus, he invited others to gaze at Jesus. And what was the end result? People stopped following him and started following Jesus. How backwards does that feel in our day and time? Because right now we live in a culture that is all about cultivating followers. And here's the thing, until, until you see Jesus, friends, you will live to be seen like Jesus. You will want praise. You will want credit. You will minister out of your own strength. But once you see Jesus, you will want others to see Jesus. Several years ago, I developed a fascination with the Tour de France, which is probably not most of your stories. But I, I developed an affection for the Tour de France, and if you're not familiar with it, it's a 2,100-mile race over about a 21-day period, and, and it's teams of eight people that work together to win the race. But you have to understand that, that nobody can win the Tour de France without a team. And so what teams will do is they will, they will select the best rider from the group and they will identify that person as the leader and the, the rest of the team will ride in order for that one person to win. And there's actually a term around cycling known as the domestique. Domestique in French means servant. And so the domestique is a particular person that sole goal is to ride so that someone else will win. So if the leader on their team is thirsty, then the domestique will slow down and go to their team's car and get some water and pedal back up to, to their guy and give them some water. If, if their team leader gets a flat tire, then the domestique will, will stop and just hand over his bike. Years ago, there was these commercials uh, Lance Armstrong and Alberto Contador were both riding for the same team and both believed that they deserved to be the leader. And so commercials would be like, who's it going to be? Armstrong, Contador. And the reason that I tell you that is, is that when we wake up each morning, the commercial will roll through your mind. Who deserves to be the leader today? And we have an enemy that just wants to whisper in and say, ride for yourself you deserve the glory. You deserve the credit today. Just ride for yourself. And yet John the Baptist was clear. I'm the domestique. I ride so that Jesus will win. And we know today Jesus has already won. And so we don't ride so that Jesus will win. We ride so that his victory will be realized throughout the earth. Greatness requires, greatness is the result of settling the question in your mind, who will ride for who? Greatness requires clarity on who you are and who you aren't. Greatness requires clarity on who Jesus is and who he isn't. Greatness requires clarity on what you were put on earth to do. John the Baptist was put on earth to point 
to Jesus, and so were you. I started just by saying that Jesus chimed into the conversation about who is the goat. I just want to read you the rest of Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. He says, truly I say to you, among those born of women, there is arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. But then he goes on and says this, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Which is fascinating because he's like, you know what? I've identified the goat and yet there's many others who will be even greater than he. Who are those who are even greater than John the Baptist? Those who are even least in the kingdom of heaven. So what's Jesus saying? Here's what he's saying. He's saying John the Baptist was the last to come declaring the king is coming. The king is coming. But now we live as those who look back and say the king came. The king died. The king was buried. The king has been raised from the dead. The king has ascended into heaven and he has sat down at the right hand of the Father. We know the king of kings and Lord of lords. That's what makes us great is that we have seen the king. We have surrendered to the king. We live for the king. That's where true greatness is found. And so as you step out into the world, let me just remind you, be clear on who you are and who, you're not, who you aren't. You're not the Christ, and praise God, you're not. Be clear on who Jesus is and who he isn't. You know what? Friends, sit with him until you see him. And then be clear on what you've been put on earth to do. You've been put here to see him and then live to invite others to see him. That is what true greatness in the eyes of Jesus will look like. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I pray for these graduates as they prepare to leave this place and go out into the world. My hope and prayer is that their lives would not be marked by greatness, the greatness of the world. I pray that they would faithfully steward their lives to live out what is truly great in your eyes. May they be clear on who they are and who they aren't. May they walk with clarity on who you are and may they just do what they've been put on earth to do. I pray that they would live to see you. Pray that they would gaze at you and then invite others to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Chris, thank you so much for your investment with us for the years you've been here at Dallas Seminary. And for us who have been on the Dallas campus, we've been spoiled with Chris leading us in worship. And for our other worship leaders, uh, student worship leaders who are graduating this year, thank you, thank you, thank you for leading us to the throne. Dallas Theological Seminary is honored to play a significant role in preparing men and women on the graduate level for effective Christian ministry in the United States and around the world. We desire to equip godly servant leaders, and we believe this equipping process or preparation is both an educational and spiritual endeavor that involves three key elements. Number one, a strong emphasis on Bible knowledge and theology. Number two, the cultivation of ministry and relational skills. And number three, a firm commitment to the spiritual formation and leadership of our students. This combination of scriptures, growth in spiritual maturity, and skillful hearted leadership in the church is what Dallas Theological Seminary is all about. Our 19 academic programs, one on the certificate level, 14 on the master's level, and four on the doctoral level, emphasize these distinctives. And you'll find the purpose for the certificate and each one of the degrees being awarded today in the commencement program. The program also contains the names of 464 
students who will be graduating this year. Of those, 352 are participating in today's ceremony. The remaining are graduating in absentia. You will follow the names in the program. Only the graduates present and participating will be named during the ceremony. The photos of the graduates that you saw today before the ceremony began are pictures of many of today's participants. Many of our graduates have taken a portion or all of their coursework from one of our extension or teaching locations located in Atlanta, Austin, College Station, Fort Worth, Houston, Indianapolis, Northwest Arkansas, San Antonio, and Washington, D.C., as well as Guatemala and Israel. And today we are also celebrating our Doctor of Ministry graduates who have completed their coursework as part of our Brazil cohort in our Spanish language cohort. This year, our graduates come from 28 countries. The multi-colored floral arrangement in front of the podium is made up of several varieties of flowers in honor of the graduates from these countries. Some graduates received their degrees last summer or fall, and others will finish their coursework for their degrees at the end of the summer. An asterisk following a graduate's name indicates academic honors, and the legend at the top of page nine in your program explains these. Student and faculty awards that were given at the commencement chapel yesterday or earlier in the school year are listed on pages 21 to 23. In the procession of the faculty and the graduates, you saw a variety of colorful academic regalia. Each robe and hood is indicated to signify the academic degree held by the wearer and the school that awarded the degree. At Dallas Seminary, hoods trimmed in black represent the Master of Biblical and Theological Studies. White represents the Master of Arts degree. Those trimmed in scarlet represent the discipline of theology as seen in the hoods of the Master of Theology degree and the Master of Sacred Theology degree, and also the Doctor of Theology and Doctor of Ministry degrees. Hoods trimmed in light blue represent the Doctor of Educational Ministry degree, and those trimmed in dark blue represent the discipline of philosophy as seen in the hood of the Doctor of Philosophy degree. Royal purple and gold inside the hoods are the colors of Dallas Theological Seminary. Certificate graduates do not wear hoods. It is my privilege to present the class of 2022 for their respective certificates and degrees. Dr. Sabrina Hobson, Registrar, will assist Dr. Mark Yarbrough in awarding the degrees after I present the graduates in each category. The names of the graduates will be read by Dr. Jim Timms, Academic Dean and Professor of Educational Ministries and Leadership, or by members of the faculty as noted on pages four and five of your program. Dr. John Dyer, Vice President for Enrollment Services and Educational Technology and Assistant Professor of Theological Studies will assist. Dr. Scott Harris, Director of Doctor of Educational Ministries and Doctor of Education Program and Assistant Professor of Educational Ministries and Leadership will hood the Doctor of Educational Ministry graduates. Dr. Scott Barfoot, Director of the Doctor of Ministry Program will hood the Doctor of Ministry graduates. And Dr. Vic Anderson, Director of the Doctor of Philosophy Program and Professor of Pastoral Ministries will hood the Doctor of Philosophy graduates. Dr. Greg Hatterberg, Executive Director of Alumni Services and Assistant Professor of Educational Ministries and Leadership will greet the graduates and welcome them into the Alumni Association as they descend the platform after they receive their degrees. Now indeed, this is a celebratory occasion for our graduates and their family and friends, and we know that you want to enjoy this day. However, we have one very simple request, and we appreciate in advance you honoring this request. Because we desire to maintain decorum and to keep the celebration enjoyable for everyone and to get us out for lunch 20 minutes early, 
the administration and faculty request that you withhold all recognition. In other words, applause, shouts, cheers, cowbells, foghorns, beach balls, or anything else until I announce the completion of each degree category, at which time you can give the appropriate hoop and holler to express your congratulations to the graduates. If you wish to do so though, family and friends of the graduates are invited to stand quietly in recognition of the graduate as he or she receives his or her diploma and then be seated. We want this to be a special time of joy and celebration, but we also want to preserve the dignity of the occasion for the glory of the Lord and the enjoyment of everyone. So wait until I give you the signal and then you can celebrate with great volume together. Now I will present the candidates for degree conferral. Well, the candidates for graduation with the Certificate of Graduate Studies and the Master of Biblical and Theological Studies degrees, please stand. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that these students, including those in absentia, have met the necessary uh, prerequisites, have completed the required work at Dallas Theological Seminary, and are candidates for the Certificate of Graduate Studies and the Master of Biblical and Theological Studies. As the president of Dallas Theological Seminary, with the authority vested me by the Board of Regents on behalf of the faculty, and in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, I hereby confer on these candidates the appropriate certificate or master's degree with all the rights, honors, and privileges attached thereto. Receiving the Certificate of Graduate Studies, Tyler Alexander Gonzalez. Ted Blake Roberts. Receiving the Master of Biblical and Theological Studies degree, Aaron Jennifer Blonshine Adams. Michael Robert Astor. James Vernon Baird. Alejandra Bechtold.
David Joshua Bolton. Thomas Freeman Butler. Claudia Juliana Cadena. James Anthony Campbell. Foster Blake Cannon. Lauren Elizabeth Cannon. Kelly Carter. Andrew Chen Cheng. Carmen Christian Coker. Margaret Ann Cook. Lawrence Crow. Deng Haiyan. Lee Timothy Du. Michael Ernest Edwards. Charlene Emerson. Aaron Bruce Erickson. Douglas R. Feltz. Logan John Foster. Gao Sean. Ricky Bernard Garner. Jinta Duan Hayes. Pamela Hensley. Stephen Renee Hernandez. Christine Hill. Jeffrey Hostetler. Huang Xinyi. Emily Renee Hudler. Cynthia Isom Johnson. Nicole Caroline Kester. Leslie J. Lee. Rodman Martinez. Olivier Jack Melnick. Miao Xin. Ronald A. Miller. Chris Morgan. Claudio Nazari E. Eh. 
Ni hon chi. De pay Kevin new. Alisa May Oradat. Gretchen Elizabeth Palmquist. Jennifer Lynn Pina. Len Michelle Pollard. Allison Mackenzie Parker. <laughs> Aaron Anthony Reed. Christopher Ray. Stephanie Joy Reynolds. Cecilia Yvonne Rios. Ozi Samdi. Joshua Stephen Sanders. Tyra Nicole Sias. Evan Lawrence Simmons. Michael James Simon. Mark Anthony Simpson. Mark Sindoni. Amber Marie Smith. Lorna Soderberg. Jocelyn Chen Sun. Su Jen Wan. Duan Ming John. Jill Vaselli. Rebecca Shalene Walton. Andrea Natalie Wharton. Joshua Wade Whitehorn. Bradley Scott Williams. Andrew Michael Wilson. Davis Wong. Sheji Rachel Woods. Well, if you will please stand and join me in congratulating the graduates.
And now may all the Certificate of Graduate Studies and Master of Biblical and Theological Studies graduates, you get a chance to express your appreciation for folks that are here today. Great, you may be seated. Will the candidates for graduation with the Master of Arts degree please stand? Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that these students, including those in absentia, have met the necessary prerequisites, have completed the required work of Dallas Theological Seminary, and are candidates for their respective Master of Arts degrees. As the president of Dallas Theological Seminary, with the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents, on behalf of the faculty, and in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, I hereby confer on these candidates the appropriate Master of Art degrees with all of the rights, honors, and privileges attached thereto. Receiving the Masters of Arts in Biblical Studies degree, Kimberly Michelle Roberts. Charles Snyder. Receiving the Master of Arts in Christian Studies degree, Augusto Aniano. Johnny Arias. Atasha Christina Brown. Craig Stephen Campisi. Luis Gabriel Sejas. Tai Chiu He, Damon Cole, Carrie Susan Cooper, Tai Yong. Dong Li, Yaling Du, Franz Antonio Fayeta, Jeffrey Nathan Hawkman.
Raul Hurtado. Jin Chen Guang. Marcelo David Hojera. Joyce Ann Cool. Marcelo Fabian de la Llave. Luke Hanson McKinnon. Guillermo Malara. Mu Ping. Nicholas Taylor Orgo. Nelson Isai Osorio Lobos. Paul Louis Sultan. Li Ying Zhang. Zhu Liang Cai. Receiving concurrently the Master of Arts in Christian Studies and the Master of Biblical and Theological Studies degrees, Brian Allen Langhoff. Receiving the Master of Arts degree in Theological Studies, Jonathan David Barnes. Julio Mucci. Receiving the Master of Arts degree in Christian Education, Aimi Aimi Osa Asawata. Jordan Chandler Beaton. Jordan Lane Beershank. Edward L. Broadway. Rashida Broussard. Nathan Eugene Brown. Yabing Chen. Chase Austin Clark. Rhonda Faye Coleman. Jonathan Justin Daniels. Marcy Ann Dittmer. Deandra Michonne Fisher. Kelsey Glover. Lishia Guo. Marta Hernandez de Mera. Laura Gail Hogan. Tyler Gary David Josephson. Esther Lee. Lois McGuire. Michael Unk. Joshua Michael Painkey. Amanda Brooke Reikley.
Michelle Tsai. Wen Ji Chung. Christy K. Williams. Destin Latif Williams. Allison Michelle Wolfert. Receiving the Master of Arts in Biblical Counseling degree, Sierra Lee Aguilar. Caitlin Nicole Bailey. Megan Nicole Beckman. Monica Bogosian. Marcel C. Bordelon. Yvette Melina Bustamante. Jean Natalie Sherazard. Liliana Isabel Cruz. Christy Leanne DeWillis. Kristen Brooke Hatterberg. Ashley Marie Eckstein. Cody James Franklin. Tristan Kyle Frazier. Rachel Elizabeth Gilhoy. Marcus David Goodwin. Tori Brianne Hankey. Derek Kent Harmon Jr. Hunter D. Hiscox. Hattie Lee Kennedy. Charles Tyler Kibbe. Tyler Quentin Cuban. Annalise Malia Hayes Lind. Maricela Linnebarger. Suzanne Charlotte Lintner. Rebecca Lau. Ryan Michael Marlowe. Stephanie Lynette McCoy. Michelle Mejia. Courtney Shea Mitchell. Catherine Underwood Murray.
Olivia Claire Pertle. James Richard Ray. Taylor Marie Schimmick. Jennifer Michelle Slattery. Sydney Michelle Squires. Monica Elaine Stevenson. Samuel Drake Thomas. John Franklin Tillery. Tara Ann Tittle. Allison Marquet Turner. Rebecca Ann Uderman. Stephanie Renee Waters. Suzanne Stewart Whiplinger. Daniel Dowling Yang. Natasha Erline Young. Amy Porter Zaccaroli. Hannah L. Zeller. Receiving the Master of Arts in Chaplaincy and Ministry Care degree, Mark Allen June. Receiving the Master of Arts in Media Arts and Worship degree, Savannah Chloe Brady. Olivia Joy Cheney. Anne Claire Cummings. Peggy Howard. Christine Langford. Jennifer Cozen Matner. Karina Lynn Winkleman. Receiving concurrently the Master of Arts in Media Arts and Worship and the Master of Arts in Christian Education degrees, Misty Hedrick. Receiving concurrently the Master of Arts in Media Arts and Worship and the Master of Arts in Christian Studies degree, Stephen Ray Joyner. Receiving the Master of Arts in Apologetics and Evangelism degree, Kaylee Marie Seeger. Kenneth J. Arrington. Kylie Badgley. Nathan Earl Bearfield. Abby Noel Blackwood. Jeremy Chapman. 
Daniel Ray Clinton. Whitney Allison Contristano. Craig Andrew Darby. Elizabeth Annie Dershmer. Deborah Cozort Eberts. Morgan Taylor Eski. Oganatega Falfa. Bailey Fields. Sean Finley. Brian Ross Furley. Heather Nicole Gleason. David Matthew Hardiman. Jonathan Edward Heaton. Melissa Izanrate. Mark Devereaux Jeske. Aaron Alfred McArdle III. Catherine Marie Wynn. Matthew Isaac Natesel. Kelly Ryan O'Neill. Catherine Ann Page. Sabina Papu. <whistles> Kayla Lynn Riesenberg. Joshua Esperanza Rivera. Stuart Jeffrey Severino. Jared Randall Shover. Roy Everett Reese Spears III. Quincy Tyrone Stratford. Katie Brooke Torbett. Carrie V. Tucker. Angela Diane Turbyville. Bryce Lynn Vaught. Kathleen Aaron White. Jacob John Jared Williams. Lisa Marie Williams. Receiving concurrently the Master of Arts in Christian Leadership and the Master of Arts in Christian Studies degrees, Michael Peter Glunk, Jr. Daniel R. Heilman. Samuel Honoré Mathieu. Receiving the Master of Arts in Cross-Cultural Ministries degree, 
Caitlin Elise Can. Lisa Chan. Kyle Jeffrey Sparwasser. Receiving the Master of Arts degree in Intercultural Studies, Krista Cox Watanabe. Kimberly Newton Dvorak. Redland Josiah Dvorak. Thomas H. Renard. Receiving concurrently the Master of Arts in Intercultural Studies and the Master of Arts in Christian Studies degrees, Christopher Brian Wold. Caleb Wayne Yee. Receiving the Master of Arts in Biblical Exegesis and Linguistics degree, Nathan Thomas Ritchie. Emily Greer Wellam. You've been behaving so well. <laughs> but now is your chance. So please stand and congratulate our MA graduates. And MA graduates, you're already standing. This is your chance to give, give thanks to your family and friends. Well, the candidates for graduation with the Master of Theology degree or Master of Sacred Theology degree, please stand. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that these students, including those in absentia, have met the necessary prerequisites, have completed the required work at Dallas Theological Seminary, and are candidates for the Master of Theology degree or Master of Sacred Theology degree. As the president of Dallas Theological Seminary, with the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents and on behalf of the faculty, and in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, I hereby confer on these candidates the appropriate Master of Theology or Master of Sacred Theology degrees with all of the rights, honors, and privileges attached thereto.
Receiving the Master of Theology degree, Russell D. Almond. Stephen Spencer Amaral. Daniel Mark Atkinson. Laura Pisker Bandy. Matthew Bruce Cedar. Raleigh Clay. Jason Koch. Jad Radwan Dogger. Joseph Sean Davidson. Adam Michael Darris. Casey Leon Donnelly. Noah Ryan Fullwider. Charles Lee Golden. Ruben R. Hui. Thomas Richmond Howard, Jr. Eric Nathan Jimenez. Jeffrey Russell Kelleran. Matthew Allen Keel. Lane Talbot Kipp. Joshua William Coker. Tyler Scott Larson. Christian David Lefko. Alyssa Nicole Link. Jonathan Ernest Locke. Sandy Polos Malikal. Christopher David Marsh. Logan Paul Matineer. Ryan McGee. Andrew Cameron McKinley. Luke Michael Nagy. Danielle Joy Osborne. Samuel Palacios. Grant Charles Partrick. Roy Daniel Pendergraft. Paul Peterson. Jacob Russell Prochaska. Philip Querfeld. Rebecca Joy Querfeld.
Natasha Alejandra Ramos Glorigan. Patrick Joseph Ransom. Andre Jovan Renshaw Roberts. Preston Caleb Russell. Daniel Lamar Salter. Dustin Brady Sandback. Emmanuel Lionel Shepherd. Stacy Nicole Simmons. Matthew Dean Sims. Peter Simwanza. Ruth sings it. Manifon Sorivon. Daniel Philip Starnes. Sean Aston Austin Tracy. Robert Frank Urbanek. Nathan Paul Wakefield. Joseph Benjamin Howard Walton. Jason Daniel Weir. Seth Madison Williamson. Richard Scott Young. Receiving concurrently the Master of Theology and Master of Arts in Christian Leadership degrees, Diana Jean Francis. Will you please stand and join me in recognizing these graduates? And now all the Master of Theology and Master of Sacred Theology graduates, it's your chance to stand and give appreciation to your family and friends. Will the candidates for graduation with the Doctor of Educational Ministries degree please come forward and stand in front of the podium. Great. 
Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that these students, including those in absentia, have presented the prerequisite college and seminary degrees, have satisfactorily completed the Doctor of Educational Ministries program, and are thus candidates for the Doctor of Educational Ministry degree. As the president of Dallas Theological Seminary, with the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents and on behalf of the faculty, and in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, I hereby confer on these candidates the Doctor of Educational Ministry degree with all of the rights, honors, and privileges attached thereto. Receiving the Doctor of Educational Ministry degree, Dr. Magalie Rodriguez. Dr. Alan David Ryan. We're going to give them a second because they've been in school for a really long time. <laughs> We're going to ask for our two newest doctors to remain standing, and everyone else is going to remain seated, but let's congratulate these two individuals. Will the candidates for graduation with the Doctor of Ministry degree please come forward and stand in front of the podium.
Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that these students, including those in absentia, have presented the prerequisite college and seminary degrees, have satisfactorily completed the Doctor of Ministry program, and are thus candidates for the Doctor of Ministry degree. As the president of Dallas Theological Seminary, with the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents on behalf of the faculty and in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, I hereby confer on these candidates the Doctor of Ministry degree with all of the rights, honors, and privileges attached thereto. Receiving the Doctor of Ministry degree, Dr. Matthew Ahn. Dr. Wendell Brent Ashby. Dr. Shi Ju Chang. Dr. Robert Joseph Dolshaw. Dr. Christopher Jeremy Respass. <laughs> Dr. J. Varghese Matthew. Dr. Brian Gerald Richard. Dr. Fransner Semedi. Dr. Jarrett Ryan Fix. Dr. David Chung Shu. Dr. Thomas Dozier Jackson, Jr. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Ronnie L. Stanley, Jr. Dr. Daniel Merle Thompson. The following graduates are from the Seminary de Men Brazil cohort in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Dr. Sidraki Fijere Fontes. Dr. Arde Langerfe. Dr. Gary Wayne Parker. The following graduates are from the Seminary Spanish Language DMIN program offered on the campus of Seminario Teológica Centro Americana in Guatemala City, Guatemala. Dr. Gonzalo Bolaños. Dr. William Herman Carcoma Romas. Dr. Jorge Ermanger. Dr. Carl Alejandro Golsher Campoyo. Dr. R. Hiberto Montes de Oca Sanchez. Dr. Eduardo Ortiz Torres. Dr. Huberto Santiago Ortega. Dr. Roxana Torres.
And again, we will give them a moment. I'll ask for all the Doctor of Ministry graduates to please stand and everyone else remain seated, but please express your congratulations to them. Will the candidates for graduation with the Doctor of Philosophy degree please come forward and stand in front of the podium. Mr. President, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to certify that these students, including those in absentia, have presented their prerequisite college and seminary degrees, have satisfactorily completed the Doctor of Philosophy program, and are thus candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degree. As the president of Dallas Theological Seminary, with the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents on behalf of the faculty and in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, I hereby confer on these candidates the Doctor of Philosophy degree with all of the rights, honors, and privileges attached thereto. Receiving the Doctor of Philosophy degree, Dr. Eric Ocheng Arowo. Dr. Daniel Maurice Blair. <laughs> Dr. Michael Del Rosario. Dr. John Mark Hallman. Dr. James Wendell Knox.
They've been in school for a really, really long time. So we'll give them a second as well. And will the Doctor of Philosophy graduates please stand? And let's offer congratulations to them. May we stand together for the prayer of dedication. What an epical moment we have witnessed, our Father, as these graduates have walked across this platform, having achieved, for many of them, a dream of life a long-awaited milestone, an accomplishment we all admire. But now the test begins. As they enter the ranks of reality, as they follow you in your will, we dedicate them to you. May they follow the prophets' directive. May they throughout their ministry do what is right. May they think right, decide right, follow right in your path and accomplish right objectives for the right motive. May they do what is right. May they love mercy. May they never forget those in this broken world who've never known the Savior. May their hearts continue to go out to them. May they never forget what it was like living without Christ. And may their compassion touch the lives of those to whom they minister. May they love mercy. And may they walk humbly with you, their God. May they serve you faithfully for your glory for your honor, for the purpose of your will being accomplished. May they walk humbly with their God. In the name of Christ, our Master, our Savior, we pray. Everyone said, Amen. Would the graduates remain standing and would the audience please be seated for the recessional? Graduates, it comes to this. 
we love you. And we pray for you. Now go, you servants of God.